Hello and welcome to They Think It's All Over. It's the last programme in the series. And with Gary leading by four programmes to two, the tension tonight is completely non-existent. <laughs> with Dave and Lee, a former sports presenter who went on to rock the world of morning TV by never being caught shoplifting or wearing women's clothes. <laughs> Nick Owen. And Gary and Rory's team is a comedian who's often seen at Wembley Stadium. He's the one hovering over the ground with Goodyear stamped on his arm. <laughs> Bill Jupiter. <laughs> we start the ball rolling with our goal celebrations round. We see a goal being scored and then celebrated. We want to know what story lay behind the celebration. David Lee and Nick. Here's Sheffield Wednesday's David Hurst scoring in the 5-2 defeat by Everton last season. And here comes the Gleaser. Can he pick out Hurst? He can. Here's a great opportunity for David Hurst. He takes it. Yeah, it's a yeah. bat in action. So if I could just confer with Nick for a moment. Yeah, thanks. So. <laughs> <laughs> now you should confer with David because he did the shot and then he started walking. Did you notice that? <laughs> <laughs> He's a cricket nut and uh, perhaps he's a Sheffield Wednesday had someone brought in like Jeff Boycott to make them more flamboyant or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was hypnotised by Paul McKenna and every so often he thinks he's a cricketer. A very similar experience Dave underwent in the 70s. <laughs> I mean, we're still trying to get him out of it. Dave, come on. <laughs> Are you on tour at the moment? Sorry. I'm on tour at the moment, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got a CD, have you, out at the moment? I've got a CD out at the moment. Yeah, I haven't quite worked out how to put it back oh, in. Great. But uh, <laughs> in the book? I brought a book out on cricketing tips, and oh, yeah. uh, it's just one page. It says, Dave, don't bother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do we get a like point or not? No. It's oh, a bit no. like Anne Diamond. I'm afraid it's very much. <laughs> 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 yeah, only a bit like Anne Diamond. Um, <laughs> Gary Steen? Was it his sixth goal, or their sixth goal? It was six, that's it. And he sort of like... They were, they were five nil down, weren't they? And no, they, they, they need six to win. They weren't five nil six. <laughs> Rory, they weren't, you don't celebrate like I'm, that. I'm you five nil down. I'm going <laughs> 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 to give you a point because you're on the right line, yeah. so I'm going to give you a point for that. Here is the other boy, Hurst, to explain what actually it meant. It was my hundredth league goal, and uh, me and Guy Whittingham before the game, uh, if I got the goal, uh, he'd come up and bowl towards me. I'd play a cricket shot and obviously celebrate my century. To celebrate her century, the Wednesday players went out on a pub crawl, and manager David Pleat went out on a curb crawl. <laughs> <laughs> Ian Wright told me to say that. <laughs> Very Rory and Phil, action from this season's Coca-Cola Cup view, it's Ipswich versus Fulham. So the first division side still trail here at Craven Cottage, but they have threatened to do something about it. And Simon Milton's done just that. That's a terrific goal. <laughs> so how do you account for that? Did he want to break into the media and he thought if he played dead, he might get to present his own chat show on daytime television? <laughs> <laughs> Leave it, Nick. Leave it. It's not worth yeah. it. <laughs> we'll have him later. <laughs> Was he doing an impression of uh, Danny Bear and being picked up by three footballers at once? <laughs> I, I think he just got carried away. <laughs> oh. Boom, boom! Oh, thank God this is the last in the series. <laughs> it's not uh, an extract from the zany new No Holds Barred, They Think It's All Over Christmas video, is it? What, Fourteen ninety nine at most shops. Excellent value. <laughs> This seems really Imagine. pathetic. Is it just that he, the geezer was just injured a lot? Was it Had he been injured loads? Yeah, yeah, I'll give you three points for that, yeah. <laughs> Here is goal scorer Simon Milton to tell us. Well, it was my second game of the season, having missed the first seven through injury. So it was uh, the fact that I'd spent more time on the treatment table than I had on the football pitch. So uh, it was the old stretcher routine. <laughs> if it's town there who go by the nickname of Town. But you just love that razor-sharp East Anglian wit. <laughs> the Ipswich chairman goes by the curious name of David Sheepshanks. But if you think that's embarrassing, Fulham's chairman is called Jimmy Hill. 
OK, so you've got three points there. And at the end of that round, David's team have nil and Gary's team have four. <laughs> On to our injury board round now. Twelve numbers to choose from, each revealing a sporting celebrity and an object. We want to know how that object injured the sports person and prevented them from competing. David's team first. You want to pick a number? Can we have an easy one, please? Number one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you'll recognise that stalwart of the Talky United defence, Jim mm -hmm. McNichol, mm -hmm. and equally that stalwart of the Devon and Cornwall constabulary, Ginger. <laughs> so what did Ginger do to hurt Jim? Did he just, like, not return his phone calls? <laughs> well, that's certainly true. You know, you know what it's like. You well, where would he keep the change? <laughs> Some phone calls are really cheap at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of prices are we looking at? You want to reverse the charges when you make a call, so it doesn't make any difference to you. Well, I only do it to you, mate. <laughs> I want to reverse the charges to you, and then you let me breathe like that. LAUGHTER <laughs> Because I'm an asthmatic, that's why I do it. Have you ever shaved an asthmatic? It's quite passionate. <laughs> did he, um, did McNichol try to uh, grab his helmet? <laughs> <laughs> Is it like walkie talkie? <laughs> that's quite funny. <laughs> New chuckle brother. <laughs> Did Ginger yeah. mistake him for an Arsenal player and just arrest him? <laughs> no, police dogs don't actually do the arresting. <laughs> so, Neither they, do they wear they... hats, for God's sake. <laughs> Does the dog give him fleas? What's known in the game as a... Let no, David finish it. Oh, yeah, go on. Yeah, it's, it's, my bluff. it's not <laughs> that important. Go <laughs> <laughs> on, Dave. Can we it's do that again? What's known in the game as a flea transfer. It's going to be sighs of relief around the country when oh, Dr. Beeching comes back to replace him. <laughs> <laughs> did, did the dog bite him when he took the lead after 10 minutes? <laughs> Have you got a rag mag with you? <laughs> The dog Come obviously off. bit him, but I, I'd like to know the significance of the dog biting him. The dog biting him brought on another incident in the and game. That's what, rabies? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you one point for the dog biting him. That's fairly obvious, isn't it? Here's what happened. In 1987, Torquay were 2-1 down to Crewe and eight minutes away from going out of the league when Ginger ran on and bit McNichol. During the dog-related injury time that followed, Torquay scored the equaliser that kept them in the league and Ginger was given the freedom of the city. Although I'm sure he'd have preferred a bowl of winner lot. <laughs> Apparently, when the equaliser went in, the opposition fans started chanting, Who's the bastard in the fur? <laughs> so, Gary's team, what number do you want? Uh, six will do. Number six, OK. Right, that's Scottish 800 metres runner David Strang and an elephant. So, how did a pachyderm bring down Scotland's finest? <laughs> in previous short-term memory, they fed him the pituitary glands of elephants in his diet. <laughs> this is turning into cool my blood. <laughs> it didn't improve his memory, but he can now shove current buns up his ass with his knob. <laughs> hey, damn, that's my bun up his ass with his knob joke, John. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Bloody hell. Did four of them get any mini? <laughs> Oh dear. When did you finish at school? <laughs> was, he, uh, was he having a single oh. on the ivory? <laughs> Incidentally, it might be of interest you to know that at school, um, Gary's nickname was Dumbo. <laughs> not because of his ears. Because mm. no. he had an eight foot cock. <laughs> <laughs> There's barely room for our legs under here, I'll tell you. <laughs> Oh, I think you find if you look at my contract, all eight foot cock jokes are mine. Oh, actually. <laughs> we'll get him sacked from football focus before he knows it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, any more ideas? Happy with that. <laughs> um, was he in a grey tracksuit, maybe? <laughs> with a <gel> no! <laughs> no! With a she elephant's mask on. Yeah. Wearing <laughs> obsession for elephants. Yeah. <laughs> Use his personal best. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to have to hand it across. What makes ah. you think we give a f anyway? <laughs> well, nothing, nothing you've done in the three series so far. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Right then. So, 
Okay, yeah, we'd love to have a go. We'll have a we'll have a wild stab at this cat. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Was he in a Tarzan film and forgot to say the word ungawa? <laughs> Now, the answer is, in fact, that David Strang, while training in South Africa, visited a safari park and got elephant tick fever from the tiny parasite that lives on an elephant. It was the most suffering caused by a tiny parasite since Eric Hall became an agent. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team had one and Gary's team had four. In this round, we ask what's going on. We play our team some bizarre sporting action and ask them to explain what's happening. This week, both our clips involve weird Eurosports. David's team, have a look at this. Hey, Gary's eight-foot cock. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, what was that all about, then? Did, uh, you said Eurosports. Yeah. Switzerland. Switzerland, yeah. good. Yeah, because they looked a bit sort of, didn't they? Lederhosen and funny hats yeah. and stuff. Points or not for that? No. <laughs> Is it the uh, Swiss army on manoeuvres? They've not had a war for so long, they've completely lost the touch. You know? <laughs> <laughs> lost the plot. I think it was the World Kite Flying Championships, and it was that infamous year when all the string was stolen. <laughs> <laughs> I think what it is, right, is they, they, the geezer with the, the, with the Gary Lineker, right? What he does, <laughs> he whacks the ball, and the other fellas, they have to chuck those things up in the air to stop it going over. It's a sort of Swiss version of bat and trap, isn't it? I mean, is that, that Cockney rhyming thing? <laughs> Swiss version of that. Yeah, I'll mm. give you the points for that. I'll give you yeah. the points for that, yeah. Yeah, here's Mr Sport himself, Charles E, to fill us in. Here's something new. Just watch this fella. I'll explain later. Oh, what a swipe. Two or three hundred yards that disc has gone. And here are the opposition players trying to stop it with wooden balls. Actually, it is one of the most popular games in Switzerland. It is called La Hornus. La Hornus is still, despite the age of that clip, uh, the second most popular pastime in Switzerland after Nazi gold embezzling. <laughs> <laughs> La Hornus. <laughs> La Hornus, a game in which a small projectile fired by a flexible cane is brought down by a team of men holding a state agent's placards. And it still makes more sense than American football. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Steam in your clip. You will, in fact, be able to work out the answer if you listen carefully to the commentary and if you can speak fluent Finnish. <laughs> So what do we think was going on there? Young Conservatives? <laughs> <laughs> Is it an extract from a very, 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 very soft porn video? <laughs> so, marriage guidance video, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. You carry your wife over these obstacles as you do through life. That's not... <laughs> yeah, I'll give you three points for yeah. that. Right. <laughs> yeah, it was in fact highlights of this year's World Wife Carrying Championship. <laughs> held annually in Finland. The championships are open to anyone from any country who can pick up a woman and run off with her as fast as he can. This year's hot favourite is the Bishop of Argyle. <laughs> Will Carling was recently disqualified from the British version when he picked up someone else's wife and ran away with her. <laughs> so at the end of that round, <laughs> David's team have four and Gary's team have seven. <laughs> this next round proves that some things don't mix. English cricket and success, Arsenal and the law, and of course sport and poetry. We have some lines of verse for each side, and what we want to know is, what are the next lines? David's side first. This is your offering, penned by none other than Paul Gascoigne. Now please don't worry about a thing. I know I'm getting thinner, but at the back of my mind... Mm. I only want my dinner. <laughs> I think you've gone too clever. This is ah. Paul Gascoigne, remember? <laughs> is this a poem by Gascoigne, or is this just his entire autobiography? <laughs> I think it doubles up. It doubles up. Right. I don't no. think there are any more words. I think he was distracted by a pint. 
So this is by ten. that well-known chant, he's fat, he's round, he writes like Ezra Pound, is it? <laughs> but where is, that, is this well known? Is this, is this Glasgow Rangers versus the Bloomsbury set? No, <laughs> it's, 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 so <laughs> it's got to be a winner, isn't it? It's Maybe got, it is. Is that like a hint? Yeah. <laughs> what is that? No flies on you. <laughs> dumbly, dumbly, dumbly. No, there are actually. <laughs> Manuel, brush them off. <laughs> <laughs> In the back of my mind, I'll always be a winner. I'll give you that, it's close enough, yeah. yeah. We've got points! Here is the full <laughs> stanza. Points on natural. <laughs> now please don't worry about a thing. I know I'm getting thinner, but at the back of my mind, there'll only be one winner. That was from Gaz's poem, Just Me, written in hospital soon after his knee injury in 1991. His wife Cheryl also wrote a poem when she was in the hospital having a baby. Curiously, it was also called Just Me. <laughs> <laughs> Like his fellow poet, Shelley, he went to Italy, and curiously enough, like Shelley, he died on his arse out there. <laughs> OK, Gary's team, your wordsmith is nine-year-old Frederick Motson, son of John. I dreamt last night that my boots had turned into jelly sweets with licorice strings for laces, studs made out of dolly mixtures. Lights flooded on, and in came Dad. So? What an anorak, he's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> the lights flooded on, in came Dad. He said, where's those magic mushrooms I had? <laughs> uh, lights flooded on, and in came Dad, and said, uh, is that poetry you're writing, son? <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a look? Was that an intruder in there? <laughs> I don't know. It wasn't Motson, was it? It was a vague neo motty esque yeah. you know. Well, for God's sake, his son sounded like, I dreamt last that's night that my horse yeah, yeah, that's that. turned into jelly sweets. Yeah, that's a nine year old son, if ever I heard one. Fair enough. I'm John Motson's son. <laughs> I'm nine. <laughs> I bet he's very popular at school, isn't he? Hey, Motson, you're a wanker, you are. Who are you calling a wanker? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, mother, father, I'm home. <laughs> Georgie Best, superstar, looks like a woman and he wears a bra. <laughs> Could you help me with my homework, <laughs> Mike flooded on an in came dad who said, curiously enough, that's the 13th sweet related dream you've had since 1980. <laughs> <laughs> These are the correct words. Lights flooded on and in came dad. Are you all right? Not worrying about tomorrow in the school team. <laughs> Frederick Motson is possibly the only boy in the world who wears sheepskin pyjamas. <laughs> I've never seen the magazine before in my life. <laughs> His mother says he can stay. <laughs> <laughs> and so at the end of that round, David's team have seven and Gary's team have seven. It's time for our regulars to touch up the famous uh, as we play Feel the Sportsman. David and Lee, it's you up first, if you'd like to take your blindfold. They have 90 seconds to work out the identity of a mystery sports star without the use of their eyes. OK, you ready? Can we have our first mystery guest, please? Okay, your 90 seconds start now. Oh. <laughs> and it's, it's Lee. Hang on. Is that you again? Hello, <laughs> 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 Terry. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, what was that? Oh, my God. Here, Dave. Yep, cricket. No, don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> You're in trouble, mate. Uh, hang on. Oh, oh what was that? <laughs> Am I oh, all right? What have you found, <laughs> Mr. Gower? Lee, Lee, what? come here, so I think I've found something. What, is it you? <laughs> oh, no, it's a bra strap. Dave. <laughs> a bra strap? Yeah, but I'll give you a clue. It's a, it is a bra strap, but it isn't Mike Gatting. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, is it? Let's do a quick feel. Um, 
Uh, is it Jeanette written? Is it? Quack, quack. Quack, quack, quack. Very long name. Quack, quack, quack. What is it? Quack, quack, quack. 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 Quack, qu
this, I think it's a dog food, actually. Chum. It probably is a dog food now. Um, uh, uh, no way, no. Uh, it's, no. It's senor in Spanish, senor. <laughs> Mr. Mr. And when you're, when you're, you know, a bit sort of lively and sexy and, you know. Mr. Hurst. <laughs> It's the opposite of goodbye, Beano. Hello, Dandy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a great horse, fantastic horse. Same with David Ellsworth, very good. Um, same Christian name as Beardsley. Peter. Same surname as Beardsley. Beardsley. <laughs> no, sort of. No, no, um, yeah. Very good. So you've moved on to 20, you need 10 to draw level, Lee. Don't forget, you've got derby winners. Derby winners. And your 90 seconds oh, hang on. start. It'll be a long 90 seconds. <coughs> you ready? Oh, well, oh where has it gone? It's like with Lord Lucan and stuff. Horse. There we go. Correct. Uh, here's what I, I know we started. Here's sorry. what I prepared earlier. That program. Chicken casserole? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Round no scissors. Sticky back plastic. Blue Peter. Correct. <laughs> um, I don't. I think it was a ballet dancer as well. Like, yeah. uh, you eat it and it's like spaghetti, but it isn't. And it's Bolognese. Well, no, the other one. Ravioli. No. Macaroni. Of, correct. <laughs> um, what you've got under the desk. Great man. <laughs> 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 well, no, you know, no, no. The uh, first word is you make a telephone. Cool. And the second word is not a man. Twentieth century a, Mercury. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> the second one is not a man, but a younger version of a man. Boy. Boy. Correct. So Poor boy. To your, correct. What you've got Here. under the desk? I thought it couldn't it. Second word. Richard Lionheart was one of these. King. No. He used to, what he did. Crusader. Yeah. And the first word. Richard Lionheart probably was one of them as well. <laughs> Because he liked Pink the crusade. What? Uh, hey, yeah, hey, happy, happy, happy. No, oh, you know, Mary. Homosexual. Mary. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you start with um, that? Yeah. He comes down the chimney every year. Yeah. Father Christmas. No, it's my Uncle Charlie. Happy Christmas. <laughs> 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 uh, what we all do eventually. You Die. did it with cricket, you did it on TV, Phil did it did with TV, Gary did it with windy. Die. <laughs> it's uh, no sec last word Retire. is uh, I want to live forever. I want to learn how to fly. Right. At that record, where that show came from. Um, Correct. Uh, and this one is, <laughs> you're upper class and I'm as much. Fame. I'm something as much. Oh, oh right. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Correct. <laughs> so at the end of that round, David's team has 18 and Gary's team have 20. And the overall winner is Gary with five games to two in the series. My thanks to David Lee and Nick, Gary, Rory and Phil. My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over, and for this series, it is now. In fact, it's not quite over, and Eddie's retired.